What up, peeps? It's time for Gross Point Bake. What is Gross Point Bake, you say? I'm baking the numbers, okay? Numbers matter, all right? Whether it's movies, box office receipts, album sales, millions of people watching TV shows and streaming, the numbers matter. Your favorite show won't come back if nobody's watching. You know what I'm saying? They'll drop you from the record label if your album ain't selling. They won't make a sequel to your movie if the first one didn't do good. Now, side note, sometimes they do make sequels to movies that bomb, but that's neither here nor there. I'm crunching the numbers right here on this show. And this time, we focus on music. Now, in hip-hop, the rappers brag about who's the best rapper alive, dead or alive. You know what I'm saying? Dead or alive. You know, who's the best? Who's the king? On this list, we're going to break down the albums. I was looking at Rolling Stone's list, if you want to call it that, of the 200 best hip-hop albums of all time. And I was disgusted by the list. But that's a whole nother episode of a whole nother show. So I was like, yo, what are the best-selling hip-hop albums of all time? Just the best-selling hip-hop albums. What hip-hop albums made people shell out the money for the most? So I'm going to give you the top... 13 best-selling hip-hop albums of all time, man. Who do you think is number one? Who would you guess off the top of your head? Who do you think is number one and which album would be number one? Who you got? We about to find out. Let's kick it off. Number 13. To the extreme, I rock the mic like a vandal. Light up the stage and watch it jump like a candle. Dance! What y'all know about Vanilla Ice? What y'all know about Vanilla Ice? When we talking real hip hop, we talking real hip hop. Oh, look no further. Vanilla Ice to the extreme. Well, that boy came in and sold albums like hotcakes. To the extreme was just selling like hotcakes. It was number one for mad long. And I was just like, yo, mind you, I've never heard this album in this entirety of my life. I've never heard, all I've heard is Ice Ice Baby and play that funky music, White Boy. Those are the only two songs I know off that album. But the album, man, they was buying it. They were buying the shit out of that album. So it's coming in at number 13. It's 7 million copies sold. Mm. 7 million. 7 million copies, man. Vanilla Ice, man. Don't sleep on Vanilla Ice, man. He got the number. And that's why you can't always say a better selling album is better than your favorite album or better than an album that's a classic. You know what I'm saying? Because... I have yet to see to the extreme on anybody's top five list. Is it is that on your top five? Is, is that is that I've never when when people ask what's your top five hip hop albums, I have yet to see to the extreme by Vanilla Ice. But let me tell you something. People bought it. I don't know what they did with them albums after they bought it, like years down the line. But uh they was mine. Number 12, Nellyville. Nellyville. Number 12, Nellyville. Nelly's second album is one of the best-selling hip-hop albums of all time, man. Over 7 million people came in and bought the follow-up to his massive country grammar album. And Nellyville is hot in here, man. You know what I'm saying? It was hot. Nelly was like, yo, we got to keep the train rolling, man. We get five, six, seven, eight. We got to keep this money train rolling. I'm coming out with a new album, and it was hot in here. We was all in. Nelly was the guy. We was buying that. We hook, line, and sinker. Sign us up. He put St. Louis rap on the map. He was out here with that Band-Aid and the shirt off. The getting hot in here video, I remember that. It was hot in here. We was all in. Then he had that song with Kelly. Was that on that album? Dilemma. Nelly was doing his damn thing, man. Out here. Dude, was Air Force Ones on that album? Yep, it was on there too, man. Nelly was killing. Nelly was killing, and the sales reflected that. Now, mind you, when I talk about sales, let me clear this up. So, SoundScan isn't what it used to be. SoundScan used to monitor the exact amount of copies an album sold. You also have the Recording Industry Association of America Certification Board. They certify your album, whether it be gold or platinum, right? And in this list, we're talking about domestic sales. So let's say, let's say you have a platinum album according to the RIAA, right? You're certified platinum. That doesn't necessarily mean that you sold a million copies. That means that you shipped a million shipments of your album. So that means you sent 
1 million copies were shipped maybe 800,000 people actually purchased the album themselves from record stores but now the game has changed now we got streaming in there I don't know how they equated mathematically but now the streaming numbers coincide with the actual physical sales too and they combine them to give you certifications now so there are a lot of certifications flying around now that aren't the traditional uh way that they used to count album sales so now this list is pretty much based on the certification status of these hip-hop albums so going forward i just want y'all to know that number 11 fuji's the score fuji's the score came out of nowhere Nobody saw this album coming. They was like, all right, it's their second album, you know what I'm saying? Their first album bombed, you know what I'm saying? I remember I bought that album, the first album, Blended on Reality, trash. It was not a good album. I was pissed. I bought that album on the strength of the single Vocab by the Fugees, but that was the remix. Nobody ever told me that. BET never said remix in parentheses. They just said Vocab, the Fugees. I go to the record store, I'm like, yo, Vocab, the Fugees, this is it. It wasn't it. That vocab wasn't even on the album. I was pissed. And the rest of the album was garbage. So they came out with the second album, The Score, the sophomore album. Blew up. Hot case. People was buying it up. It came out on the same day as Tupac's All Eyes on Me. But guess what? In total, The Score sold more albums than All Eyes on Me. In total. It was a worldwide smash. It launched the careers of Lauryn Hill, Wyclef. Prize didn't really curl over like that, but 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 Wyclef and Lauryn Hill though they they was eating, and Fuji's The Score remains one of the best selling hip hop albums of all time. They got it certified as seven million copies. Number ten. Now we in the top ten. Now, number ten, Eminem, Recovery. The Recovery album by Eminem is at eight million copies recovery was his follow-up from uh relapse relapse didn't really sell that well especially by eminem standards but recovery was his bounce back from the slump that was relapse he had a relapse it's funny that the album is called relapse because he had a kind of a relapse in sales um but the recovery was actual his recovery on the sales front so recovery did well eight million copies sold and I got a feeling this won't be the last time you see Eminem on this list. Okay, so Eminem Recovery is at number 10 with 8 million sold. Number 9, 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying. He certified at 9 million. Um, we all know when Get Rich or Die Trying came out, that took the whole world by storm. I remember that album debuted. It debuted at number one with over 800,000 copies sold. The second week, it did over 800,000 copies again. That's so rare. Usually when an album comes out, they have a big first week, and then the second week, the sales drop. But with uh, Get Rich or Die Trying, it was damn near identical weeks back to back. Get Rich or Die Trying, we was all playing it, we was all listening to it. It was that beef. It was it was his story. He, him getting shot and surviving. He had beef with everybody. The music was hot. He was linking with Dr. Dre. Eminem was around. It was the cosign. It was the perfect storm for uh, 50 Cent. And he blew the hell up. And we haven't seen a rollout like that. Shit. Since. You know what I'm saying? So Eminem, Get Rich or Die Trying. That's number nine. Nine million. Number eight. And also at 9 million, over 9 million sold. Will Smith, Big Willie style, all in it. Getting jiggy with it. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, 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 nah. Let me tell you something, man. People can clown Will Smith all they want. He has sold a lot of records. Sold a lot of records. And Big Willie style is one of the best selling hip hop albums of all time from Mr. Clean himself. Will Smith. Welcome to Miami. Big Willie style. He was doing it up. What's that song he had with him and his son? Um, just me and you or just the two of us. Big Willie style sold like hotcakes. And this, this was at a time where it was just like nobody's really checking for Will Smith musically. Nobody's really checking for him. He's an actor, man. He's you know, he's Mr. Hollywood now. Nope. He still has some music left in the chamber for that ass. And that, I admire that even more. 
Because that means he really loved the, the rap game. Because, man, let me tell you something. You making Hollywood blockbusters, you getting millions, and you still going back to the recording studio? That means you love the game, man. And it paid off because uh, Big Willie style, nine million on the certification list. That's number nine. I mean, number eight. My bad. Number seven, Eminem, Curtain Call, 10 million. Curtain Call is the greatest hits album. So, you know, you know how the greatest hits do. Some people consider the greatest hits like a cheat code. I don't know, but it's still, it's still 10 million people was like, yo, let me get that curtain call. Let me get that Eminem's greatest hits. That's why he's sitting at number seven with the greatest hits package. 10 million. 10. That's diamond. Let me tell you something else. When you sell 10 million and up, you are considered diamond status. You got the gold, 500,000. You got the platinum, 1 million. Diamond, 10 million sold. And Eminem is in there with a diamond album, greatest hits, Kurt Call. Number six, Nelly, Country Grammar. Nelly is certified at 10 million copies. Country Grammar is up there. Actually, he should be above the next one, but you know, since they tied up, I'll put one above the other. But Country Grammar came out and was selling like hotcakes, man. He came out with what's that first song he had? Uh Hot Shit. I'm going down, down, baby. Was that called Country Grammar? That was a self-title. Um, and then it was just hit after hit after hit for Nelly, man. And that album just kept selling. We all know what that album cover looks like. It's him standing in front of the St. Louis Arc, tattoo on his stomach, with the vest on, no shirt underneath, man. Nelly came out of nowhere, hit everybody in the mouth. Country Grammar remains one of the best-selling hip-hop albums of all time. Number five, and also in the 10 million diamond range now, Lauren Hill, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, Diamond Album. She recently went Diamond because of the certifications on the streaming now. So she she went up recently. Uh, before that, she was at like close to 8 million. So Lauren Hill, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill is vastly considered one of the best albums ever made in any genre. So it's not a surprise that this album is on here. She outsold the score and the score did amazing. She She even went past that. So it was amazing to see Lauryn Hill in this stratosphere of just like diamond status for an actual album. There's a lot of artists now that are doing like diamond certification singles based on streaming, but this is old school album sales, people buying the albums and you know, Lauryn Hill was breaking so many records at the time. And we talking domestic. This whole list is all domestic. And Lauryn Hill, The Miseducation is the album I still come back to on the regular. So uh, this is one of those albums that I'm proud to see up here. I'm glad it's here. And I'm just like, yes, of course it's here. Because it's one of the best albums I've ever heard. It's in my top five, personally. Is it in your top five, personally? Is it in your top five, personally? That's your number one. Amir, is it in your top five, personally? Oh, I, I knew you was going to be like, nah, man, look out, man. But, it, but still, three out of four is in our top five of all time. Lauren Hill, Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Number four. MC Hammer, please hammer, don't hurt him. Number four, 10 million, diamond. At one point in time, please hammer, don't hurt him was the best selling hip hop album of all time. It was up there, it was number one on the charts for mad long. Y'all better not sleep on Hammer, man. He was out here doing real numbers out here. Can't Touch This came out, it was everywhere. We was all in the video. We couldn't get enough of the video. The hammer pants, the dance moves was crisp. He followed it up with, you got to pray just to make it today. It was just like, yo, hammer's out here. He had a cartoon. It was just, it was hammer central, man. Complete crossover smash. Please hammer, don't hurt him. The concert. And I heard, I heard his live shows were crazy. So Hammer was just doing his thing, and that was just lightning in the bottle, and it was just like the right album at the right time. I don't know if it holds up, because I never listened to the whole album. But at the moment in time, Hammer was just like, yo, he was at the top. He was the Michael Jackson of rap at that time. So please, Hammer, don't hurt him. Number four. Number three, Beastie Boys, License to Ill. License to Ill by Beastie Boys. 
came out of nowhere, came at the right time, the right crew. The Beastie Boys were something hip hop had never seen at that time. They were like they were like party dudes in a hip hop landscape. We got Rick Rubin on the production. It was just like, yo, this is crazy. So now you got the white community coming in and buying these albums as well. It was like hip hop with a rock, party boy edge, city urban. All of that came together and, you know, the crossover, of course, the crossover appeal is going to happen. And I do feel like race plays into album sales. Look, look at who's on, been on the list so far. You know what I'm saying? Vanilla Ice, Eminem twice, Beastie Boys, you know? And so that plays a part. A lot of people be like, no, the, the race doesn't really. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. We see it right here. License to Ill, though has one of the best album covers of all time for me. It's like a, a picture of a plane that crashed into a mountain, and on the tail of that plane is the Beastie Boys, and I, I love that. My brother Scott used to have that poster in his room, and uh, and it was a moment in time, man. Beastie Boys, they, they made a change, for real. Number two, Eminem, again. Marshall Mathers LP, 11 million copies sold. Eminem yet again. I remember when the Marshall Mathers LP came out, it sold 1.7 million copies the first week. We had we had never seen numbers like that in the first week, especially for a hip hop album. And the era where they were really counting sound scans, 1.7 opening week was crazy numbers. I remember that held the title until NSYNC, No Strings Attached came out and did over 2 million first week. But Eminem was up there. Eminem had built the buzz and the rep from the Slim Shady LP, from his guest features on uh, The Chronic 2001. So it was a perfect storm. Everybody wanted in on that Marshall Mathers LP. And it showed. People were buying the shit out of that album. And, you know, the whites was buying. The whites was buying. It crossed over, of course. And Eminem, the thing about Eminem, yes, he is white, but he's a supreme lyricist. And he respects the culture. And, you know, the white audience is going to be like, yo, we all in on that too. So he was saying the right shit, the right music coming out, the right team behind him, and the Marshall Mathers LP sold like hotcakes. And number one, best-selling hip-hop album of all time, according to the RIAA certification. Eminem Show, number one. <laughs> 12 million. The Eminem Show is the best-selling hip-hop album of all time. The Eminem again. Eminem is in this list four times. Eminem is probably, at this point, the best-selling hip-hop artist of all time, given given the numbers. You see it right here. Drake, Drake might be able to pass him eventually, but uh, Eminem Show is number one. Now, mind you, you're going to look at the list and be like, Tony, you're wrong. Tupac, all eyes on me. Notorious B.I.G., Life After Death, Outkast, The Speaker Box. Those are all double albums, and I'll tell you why I didn't include them. So the RIAA, if you put out a double album, your certification is double. So let's say a million people bought All Eyes On Me. Certified-wise, it's going to be labeled double platinum, even though only a million people actually bought it. So they're going to double it because it's actually two albums together in one, but it's just one purchase. So in actuality, even though, let me clear this up for everybody because y'all going to be like, no, nah, man, no. Nah. Even though All Eyes on Me is 11 million certified, that means only 5.5 copies were actually sold. Same with uh, Outkast, same with A Life After Death, same with Tupac's Greatest Hits. They were double albums, so I had to take them off because they weren't technically the best sellers. You know what I'm saying? Life After Death sold five and a half million copies, but it just got double the certification. So that's why the list looks like it does. So if you go to if you Google the top selling hip hop albums of all time, you're gonna see Outkast on there, you're gonna see Tupac, you're gonna see Biggie. But they're double albums, so I had to take them off. So that's the list. Eminem, the Eminem show, best-selling hip-hop album of all time. Did y'all expect that? Are you surprised? Are you surprised? Do you consider any of those albums classics? Out of those 13 albums, what are your five favorite albums out of those 13? You know what I'm saying? My favorite album out of this list is Lauryn Hill. 
I would love to hear yours, though. How would you rank them? How would you rank them? Um, I'm sure most of you probably won't have Vanilla Ice as number one with this list. I'm going to ask y'all here in the studio. So, Lauren Hill is probably your favorite out of that list. Say, Amir, what's your favorite out of this list? Um, get Richard Dodd Ryan. Now get, that I saw, I saw that immediately. It was like, yeah, Get Richard Dodd Ryan. Get Richard Dodd Easily. Ryan. Easily. Easily. Okay. Okay. That G Unit. That whole that whole wave. That was, whole era. I was in elementary school. <laughs> Ridiculous. Wow. That was all you. Not the Beastie Boys, Amir. <laughs> I like the Beastie Boys. Yeah. You. But I, I mean, I was I wasn't even alive. I get it. Yeah, you know. I get it. Fifty Cent came at a time where it was just impressionable. It was like, man, this is this guy here. Is... Yeah, I get it. I get it. Now, mind you guys, since I'm doing the certification value of it, some of these some of these positions may swap. Like, you know, 50 Cent might have sold more than Will Smith or vice versa, or uh, Nelly might have sold more than Lauren Hill. Since I had to go, since it's getting tricky now with streaming, um, it's kind of hard to find the exact amount sold of each album. So um, there's that. So some of the, some of those places may switch. But those are the top albums, though, the top sellers. Um, but let me know. Let me know what you, how you feel about this in the comment section below. Also, uh, give me ideas of what else you want to see on Gross Point Bake. What kind of list you want me to curate for you guys? And are you surprised by this list? Who do you have in your mind? Is any of this a surprise? I know Vanilla Ice caught you all off guard, didn't it? What was the biggest? I want to know the biggest shocker on this list for you personally. Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, I'm out.